Hello everyone, Mike here. Today we'll be looking at how to add text behind a moving object in After Effects. This can be used when the camera's panning around as well. If you uh, move behind a large object, such as a rock or something, um, you'll be able to put the text behind the rock so it looks like it's just floating behind and it'll disappear. It's a really cool effect and I will show you how to do it. The effect looks something like this. That render was actually pretty bad. I, di I didn't do a really good job of um, making it look good. So it may look like a hard effect to do, but it's really not. Um, and so I'm just going to try to do it. It's honestly, I thought it was a lot harder than it actually was. So as you can see, we have our little clip area of the train passing by. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select this and duplicate it by hitting Command D or Control D if you're on Windows. So now we have two of the same clip. And on the bottom clip, um, if you want, if the uh, camera is actually moving in the shot, you can go ahead and hit track camera. For this shot, the camera is clearly not moving at all. It is in its normal position on a tripod. So what we can do is we can just simply add the text directly. But like I said before, if your camera is moving, you're going to want to go ahead and hit that track camera button. If you're not too sure how to use this feature or you just want to know more about it, you can go ahead and click this annotation up here. It'll take you to my previous tutorial and After Effects showing you how to use that feature. So we can go ahead and add the text here and we can type in tutorial. Okay, so if you want the text to look 3D, you can go ahead and select the text layer. On, so you can select the text layer, and then you can go ahead and hit this button here. This will turn it into a 3D layer, and you'll see that we get these options here. So we have the text floating there. Now if we drag the timeline here, you can see that the train simply passes behind the text. And that's not the effect we're going for because that just looks silly. What we were trying to do is we're trying to make the train go in front of the text. So what you're going to want to do now is go ahead and drag this text layer in between the two layers and you'll see that the text has disappeared and it's nowhere to be found. Well, to get it back, we're simply going to select this tool up here, the Roto Brush tool, and we are going to go ahead and double click our top clip. And you'll see that we're brought into this area. It looks a little complicated, but it's actually fairly easy to do. Now what this rotor brush tool does is it cuts out a specific part of the film and isolates it. So it's kind of good if you want to take like a person or a thing from one shot and put it into another. Um, but in this case, we're just using it to cut out the train from the top and just have it overlap the text that's in between the two clips. So in order to do this, you just simply take this little green cursor and you drag around the object that you want to pass in front of the text, in my case it is the train. Make sure you get the entire back of it and you'll see that we get this pink selection area. Now if you notice that the pink selection area is too big around your object, you hold the Alter Option key if you're on Mac and you simply drag to make it a bit smaller and that's simply um, telling the rotor brush tool that what it has selected automatically is actually background and we don't want that to be cut out. So if it messes up a bit when you're trying to get rid of the background, you can just um, let go of the Alt key and it'll... So, just cleaning up the edges here is really what we're trying to do. And um, you don't really have to worry about the top, like, you have to worry about one side of the object essentially if the camera's panning. So if you want it to look more realistic, you can select the back area of the train and you'll see that it'll put the selection out the back here. Um, but that will just let the train show up um, in the actual clip. And you won't notice any of these cutout areas here because the clip is the same on the bottom as it is on the top. In order to render this out, we're going to go ahead and drag the selection area out a little bit, maybe like halfway through the actual clip, and then hit the space bar, and it'll automatically um, keyframe this cutout. And right now, it is keyframing um, the roto selection. So we'll let that do it. And as you can see up here, we're just going to pause the render for a second, the um, selection area has kind of collapsed in on this red because it can't discern it from the top. You don't have to worry about that. You really have to worry about the one side where your text is going to get hidden and in our case it's right here. So I'm just worrying about this one edge here. If anything happens to that, all you simply do is stop it and then just reselect the area. So I'll use this as an example. And then just trim it back down like we did back there. And the Roto tool will remember that we made that change for the rest of the render. So as you can see now, it's up there. So we'll just let it pass. And once the 
train takes up or the object takes up the whole frame we'll pause it and then we'll drag it down a little bit so it no longer has to be rendered as roto brushed so as you can see we have a selection here and it looks pretty funky with the pink tracking area but anyway we're going to go ahead back to our composition and you'll see now if you've put the text in between the two clips that the train in fact passes in front of the text pretty cool so to show you how this is working it's actually really simple if we remove the bottom clip you'll see that the train has been isolated and it's simply just passing in front so that's just really it like we're essentially just cutting and pasting a section of the film and letting it pass in front very simple so if we add the background back passes in front seamlessly so that is it for this tutorial if you have any questions you can go ahead and leave it in the comment section or send us an email at stringtutorials at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more videos from us.